Hello, welcome to The Brain Scrub, a somewhat improvised approach to mental health. My name is Glenn Sollers. Thank you for tuning in today. Today I want to talk about living into our unconscious self-beliefs. Beliefs drive behaviors and 65 to 90 percent of what we do and what we say is unconscious to us it is just an automatic way of being by understanding your beliefs and there are beliefs that are empowering there's beliefs that are self-limiting and there are beliefs that we don't even know are beliefs and that's what i'm after in today's podcast is identifying those because it is easy to say i believe i am not confident i believe that i am not good enough i believe that there's a fear there i believe if i do this this could happen and there are so many of those that we carry around with us we'll put them in our belief baggage for now and focus in on what are those unconscious beliefs, which takes work? And there are three options in this. One is that you don't do the work, that you keep on tripping on whatever it is and then scratching your head and saying, I wonder why I have these patterns of behavior. And that's the key thing around these unconscious beliefs. You'll probably notice that there's things that you've done from a young age where you keep on doing the same thing and getting the same results. Why do we do that? Because we have habitual pathways and our brain likes our life to be easy. And even though these self-limiting beliefs may lead to things that are not easy, our brain still likes it better that way because you don't have to change. And then it can predict the future and it can control the future based on your past experiences. So it doesn't have to do a lot of thinking about changing direction and changing the past. So that's option number one is, you know what, I can just keep on going and having the impact on myself, on others, based on whatever those self-beliefs are. Option number two is I can do a bit of work around this and I can understand why am I doing this and how it might be impacting me but then I can still just be my current way of being and saying, whatever. I'm after option number three, and that is to consider what are my self-limiting beliefs based on things that I trip on once in a while, histories that have repeated themselves with me, and the future that I create, and to instead choose a new direction, which takes effort, it takes more brain power. I thought about this because thankfully every, well, almost every family has some sort of dysfunction in the family. Something's not working. And if we could look at patterns in our parents, patterns in their parents, patterns in the kids, patterns in our relatives, then we might be able to start uncovering what are some things that are happening to me based on what I've learned about myself and what I've learned in how I should be with others and how they might view me and how I perceive their views of me are unfolding. And then I start living into that. And my family is no different. I definitely have unconscious beliefs that are driving the show and I'm still trying to figure out some of them, but I know one thing that I'm tripping on for sure constantly is around my son. And I keep on trying to get in touch with him like any good father would. However, I am met with rejection. I know he does not want to mend the relationship. He feels I hate him which is untrue, but he has these things that are going on and he needs to get over that based on what he's been through around alienation. I can't do anything about that. And I know that. Why 
am I leading myself to suffering? Why do I keep on going there? I don't know. And if I consider my unconscious beliefs and I think back into the past about what I might believe about myself and what I'm creating, because I'm creating this chaos, I keep on living into a need to have a relationship with him and a need to let him know you have been brainwashed. I've loved you and I've always loved you. And I want to prove it to him. It's almost like I told you so. And for him to lose his relationship with his mother because she has caused so much harm based on her behaviors with so many people that I know. And it's terrible that this is allowed to happen. So there's an angry side there for me, for sure, around this. And I'm going to just divert my attention to to the reason why I'm doing this podcast is based on another family member. And then hopefully through this conversation, I'll actually be able to figure out a bit about me because I would really like to get conscious of this because I, I know it's getting me nowhere. I know it's making me sadder. It's causing me stress, but yet it's like I'm addicted to it. What am I addicted to? Maybe it is the chase of resolving a problem because I've always been that problem solver. Like my parents were highly dysfunctional in their relationship. The work I do in leadership development, it's all about trying to solve problems. And if I have nothing to solve, what am I going to do? And throughout my life, I start problems and I fix problems. That's probably part of it is I'm living into problem solving. And Glenn, you have to have problems. You have to be worrying about something so you can fix something. Because I never didn't have anything to worry about. I always had something to worry about. I had sleep to worry about. Is my dad going to be drunk and abusive at night? I had my mom to worry about. Is she okay? I had my brother to worry about. I thought that I had a disease when I was younger. I had to worry about that. So I've had this thing about worrying about things. That is maybe why in my body I manifest possibly aches and pains at times that I worry about certain things because I do that. That's how I live. And this problem with my son, I want to fix it. And there could even be another part there around living into, I need to be fixed. I need to, yeah, well, that's part of it. I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but this is what, this is the beauty of self-dialogue, everybody. If you can just start talking, it's amazing what happens when your mouth moves in the up and down direction and voices come out. You'll start to identify things just through the power of giving yourself freedom of speech and letting your true heart shine in the moment. Because, yeah, it's... It's frustrating for me to continue to do this, yet I do it. So yeah, problem solving. I um, fight to be loved. It's like people don't love me, so I'll try to prove myself. And that's another core need that I have is this need to prove myself, to try harder. And it's all up to me. So a lot of my puzzle pieces are there. But again, let me go back to my other situation. My stepfather, sweet man, lovely man. He has his stuff that he deals with, such as a lack of confidence. And he knows that. He knows that. He has a good level of self-awareness. However, he has a son who is not seeing him. We saw my stepbrother about three years ago, where he lives in central BC. And my stepbrother moved out to the West Coast years ago, 35 years ago, and lived his life in Victoria on the ocean. We didn't really see him that often. He had a family. He was always out to sea in his job. And 
he would come home and his marriage is not working out that well. Doesn't have a great relationship with one of his kids. I don't know how the, the relationship is with the other kid. But regardless, he is committed to his father and he calls his dad almost every day and calls his mom apparently every day to have chats. But inside the home, there's dysfunction. He drinks, he smokes, and he's now retired. And his father really wants to see him because he's never been out to where his dad lives now on the West Coast. And his dad's been here for eight years to see his father. And finally, he was going to come out and see his dad. I was so happy for this because I know my stepfather really wants to be with his son and have some deeper conversations with them. And lo and behold, what happens about a month ago is that my stepfather ends up seeing my stepbrother's wife and one of his kids that he doesn't get along with. They come visit him. So they've actually come out to see my stepfather before his own son did. And I don't know if that is the reason he's angry, but he was really upset about this. And he decided he's not going to go because he feels betrayed that this all happened. I could get into the story about what's going on more and more and more, and I'm not going to, but I have a certain level of compassion for my stepbrother, and I have a lot of compassion for my stepfather. My stepbrother, he is, uh, he's been diagnosed with PTSD from the Navy. He has different issues that he's dealing with, but I think for him, and I don't know, I'm just speculating here that what he might be dealing with is an unconscious belief that he's a disappointment and he's living into he's a disappointment and i don't think he knows that or he's even thought of that and if i consider his life from what i've seen my experience was he was always a disappointment he was in the same home as we were he drank he smoked our parents hated that he couldn't hold down a good job. He had a friend that lived in a van outside of our house. And whatever he did was disappointing to the rest of us. What does somebody who's disappointed others and feels like they're disappointment do? Well, they're going to move away probably. Like I moved away because I definitely feel part of that, that I'm a disappointment. And I have to take control of my own life. So he moved away. His home was a nice home, but it was disappointing to walk in. I'm not going to get into the details, but nothing was really organized. It was, it was pretty dirty. But that also lives into, I'm a disappointment. I'm disappointing others. His kids had problems in school. They're a disappointment, even though they're lovely children, but they likely are living into this as well. Maybe, maybe not. I'm, again, I'm just speculating here. I'm just using this as an example. However, if I look at all this unfold, to me, it's become crystal clear that this is indeed something that may be going on. And if both sides could spend some time talking about what their true feelings are with one another, what's really going on in these situations versus surface level not dealing with it or just arguing, but actually having a deeper conversation, some reflection about what happened when he was younger that might have led to this because I believe I know what it is and to resolve these differences so that he doesn't live into this anymore, which again takes a lot of effort because there's been years of habitual patterning of living into this is who you are. And then you start becoming that, but we don't know we're doing it. It's all unconscious. So the whole point of this episode is for you to consider what are those things that you keep on hitting those roadblocks? What is the message you might be telling yourself as you're hitting these roadblocks? Is this something new or is this a habit in your life? 
what might have driven that habit. And a good way of doing that is to picture yourself way back when, when there might've been some sort of event that transpired where you made a decision that this is who I am. I am a disappointment. I can't please people. Nobody's happy with me. I'm not good enough. Whatever it might be. What was going on for you at that time? But on another side is to look at, I wonder what was going on with the other side that might have made me perceive that. I wonder what their life was like at that time. I wonder what their intention was at that time. I wonder why they did what they did. So you don't go through life thinking, like in my case, that your dad hates you, that your dad doesn't love you, because that is the furthest thing from the truth. I did what I thought was right. The message received was, no, you didn't. But there's no reconciling this right now until my son is ready to do this. My hope is that if you have situations like this with somebody else in your life to please have the conversation, too many people suffer. If I think about what's going on between my stepfather and his son, it's not just my stepfather that's suffering, likely my stepbrother's suffering. The family has to be very careful around all this. My mom's suffering. I'm suffering. We're all suffering in some sort of way because I'm hearing about all this and I'm hearing about nothing's being done. There are so many people that live in the world of their thoughts. And I do too. But nothing changes unless you actually do something about it and take the risk and have a courageous conversation and try to work through these things that are limiting you in life and actually bringing it to a state of consciousness through conversation. Folks, thanks for listening.